we will just move into the next speaker. I'll just there we got Stephen here. So thank you, Stephen. So Stephen is a project program manager at Autodesk, as an experienced leader within education sector, working with universities across Europe. Stephen's daily work requires the development, building, and leading a variety of user-centered design programs and workshops for various cross-functional teams led by C-level individuals. A fellow at the Royal Society of Arts, he is actively involved in projects that have global and social impact. He has previously led multiple education-based programs, including work with the DfE and the Mayor of London. Formerly an assistant principal and leading multiple teams of people, he was the winner of the James Dyson Foundation Teacher of the Year. Please welcome the Project Program Manager at Autodesk, Stephen Parkinson, who will talk about design and design thinking in STEM education. So Stephen, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for such a lovely introduction. Thanks, Stephen. So today I'm going to talk about the sometimes referred to the silent D in STEM, which is all about design. And I'd like to just start with a quotation from the Loomer Institute. So we are entering a new age in which everyone's ability to innovate is going to matter as much as their ability to read, write and do basic arithmetic. Now that's a fantastic quote for all of us here at STEM to hear because it's such an important part that our subjects play in realising that. So you come in here today probably looking to me for a little bit about design thinking and what design thinking is, but more importantly, how can you implement design thinking with your students immediately? And you're probably thinking, well, why is someone from Autodesk speaking about this? Autodesk, a company which specializes in uh, building skyscrapers around the world. Uh, the last 20, uh, special 20 awards for special effects, uh, automotive and design and manufacturing. Well, we know for our thought leadership, the future of making, the world is changing and the world of STEM is changing in particular. Things are changing. They're becoming smarter and people want more personalized products. Making is changing. We've got some fantastic equipment out there from CNC Robotic, uh, making things for us, plasma cutters and 3D printers. And really importantly for what we're talking about today, work is changing. Uh, we're seeing a transition from low skill job to high skill jobs, use of technology and the way in which we work together is completely changing and what people, what employers want is changing uh, extremely quickly. And STEM can provide us with those answers and that's why Autodesk as a company uh, became a platform company. We created a platform so that we could all sit on that platform but what's key to us at Autodesk, we're a technology company as you know, what's key to that is we know there's a tool set, a skill set and a mindset, but critical to everything is mindset. So we can build tools and we can create skills, but without the mindset of that student, um, our, our software isn't going to be used to change the world to as much as what it can. Now, quite importantly, another quote here, design thinking isn't just limited to people who design and make things. Design thinking can be applied to every part of life to improve the decisions we make. And I think this is what we need to do as STEM educators, is actually uh, tell everybody within a school setting, every subject, that actually the stuff that we teach has an impact everywhere, whether it be finance, business, psychology, design thinking can be used in every dimension of life. So today we're gonna to cover three things. We're gonna talk about what design thinking is, we're going to, you're going to have an, an understanding of how design thinking is emerging and important in the commercial world. Because I think that's really important to reiterate to your students so they can see the big picture. And finally, really importantly, next week when you're back in the classroom, where can you use design thinking with the students? So, first let's start with this keyword innovation. IBM say business leaders rank innovation and creativity as the third most important skill in their organisation. 80% over of Fortune 500 companies have appointed an individual responsible for driving innovation, that's from Forbes. And then finally, the Chinese government is pouring billions of dollars every year, and they've got a call for indigenous innovation, and that's come from The Economist. Now, innovation there is the key word, but how do you innovate, okay? And, and what is creativity, this word that is branded around education 
but we maybe don't know truly how to access that. Well, design thinking gives us the answer, it's sometimes referred to as user-centered design, but I'm going to talk a little bit about human-centered design today and how you can implement that. So human-centered design is a discipline of developing solutions in the service of people. And two key things here, first of all, discipline. This has to be something that you embed into all of your design teaching. It can't just be a one-off and we'll look at that. And then secondly, the service of and focus on people. Um, and that is a big, big misconception of teaching design and, and things that we, we tend to get a little bit wrong. So hopefully today we're gonna to focus on that. But let me start with an example. And this is something that we do when we're teaching design thinking within Autodesk and also when we're teaching design thinking for the first time with students. And I encourage you to try it. First of all, we ask you to design a vase. And we just give them that brief to design a vase. And if you're lucky, you might get something that looks like this. Nice drawing, nice sketch. It's a vase or a vase, depending on how you pronounce it in your part of the world. You might have a flower in it. If you're lucky, you might have a pattern on it. But you've asked someone to design a vase and that's what they're going to do. We do that and then we start again and we go, actually, right, okay, in your room, interview their partner. And this time ask them what they most enjoy about flowers. Okay, and then ask them, right, we want you to design a new way to experience flowers. And then they present their idea to their partner. They ask for feedback and then they join together with someone else and use the feedback to iterate, to make changes to their design. So we gave the first a task to design of ours five minutes and we do the second part all of that in five minutes too so the same amount of time but rather than a vase we can get something completely different in this instance we've got a flower truck which doesn't just sell flowers it has an experience a smelling situation it's got classes you know this person's gone to the next level in terms of what they perceive to be uh, the problem and how they're solving that so what's going on there with design thinking? Well, there's, there's, there's lots of things going on. We've reframed the question, we've empathized with a user, we've enabled imagination, we've been collaborative, we've asked the student to present visually and they've iterated in response to feedback. Now, all of those things there are what the Luma Institute, which is a, a, a key institute in the world for teaching design thinking, they're the six main qualities of an innovator. Okay, so we need to remember that and giving those students the opportunity to do this. Some other problems that happen in the real world, this is why Autodesk took on design thinking in such a big way and why it's ripping through the commercial world. Same with your students is we look at designing a product. We look at its viability, you know, how can, is it going to make us money? Have we got the money to do that? We always look at feasibility. You know, have we got the staff to be able to build this? Can we do it? Have we got the bandwidth and the time? But more often than not, we fail to understand if there's any desirability. Does the user actually want this? Have we spoken to the user? Have we watched the users for a long period of time? The second thing we do is have you, I'm going to ask everybody on this call now, have you ever fallen in love with one of your ideas? Or have you seen a student really become attached and fall in love with their idea? Now, this is what we're trying to avoid. So for example, I'm going to share with you two axes. One axis now is love and the second is time. Now, as we design and we work on an idea, um, the more in love someone becomes with it until they come to a point where they can't let go of that idea because they put all their effort and energy into it, they never want to get, they don't want to make any changes. What we need to do with design thinking is look at short, sharp iterations so that We've got quick processes going on. So at any point we can cancel out an idea and we can start again. That's the key thing there. I often see in STEM lessons, one idea being created for hours and hours on end. What we have to do is we have to encourage lots and lots of ideas. Every idea counts, but we're looking for tens, if not hundreds of ideas in a short period of time. So why is design thinking important for STEM? Okay, well, good design is good business. The founder of IBM tells us this. And if we look at some data to back that up, this is the uh, design value index. And over a 10 year period of companies from the S&P investing in design, their stock price and their value increased by 228%. So we know that by, 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 uh, 
investing in design thinking is going to add value for a company. So the design thinking journey, what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage this journey. And now don't be alarmed by the squiggle at the start. This is the squiggle by Damien Newton. The squiggle is where all the good stuff is going on. What we're trying to do is take a student from uncertainty to focus. Sometimes we might refer to this as research, prototype and design. But the key area to focus on with design thinking is this squiggle. And I'm going to introduce to you now the double diamond, which will help you understand how you might do this with your students. So first of all, we start with a problem. And if you think back to the start of the millennium, um, when everybody on the planet everybody in the music industry or making products for the music industry was thinking about how do we make smaller CDs? And these things called mini discs were emerging and everyone was fixated with, you know, the user wants smaller things. So what people were doing is right, we need smaller products, move forward, let's create the solution, let's release another product. Now, what Apple did at that point is actually they said, you know, is that the right question to be asking? And instead of going forward, Apple went backwards and Apple asked have we got the right problem and what they did is they cast this huge divergent thinking net and they looked at uh, users they spoke to people they watched people they used design thinking methods which you'll see later to discover a little bit more about the problem they then defined the problem with some convergent thinking and then they came back to the start and thought actually people don't want smaller products they want a new way to experience music so they went away from that after exploring the problem space. They then moved forward and looked at developing an idea, again, casting a net of real divergent thinking using design thinking methods. And then they came together with some convergent thinking and delivered on what we know today as the iPod, but not just the iPod as a product, they also created a service, which was iTunes, which has now become Apple Music, which has created Spotify. We know how that works. And that was the solution space. So the big thing from the double diamond here is with your students, you need to get them to go backwards into the problem space before they move into the solution space. See an awful lot of things happening in the solution space before they fully understand the problem. And the problem with this is it constrains their thinking like Apple and like the industry was back then. Okay, and we call that, we have the right problem, we get the problem right. So where do you start? Well, we teamed up Autodesk with PrintLab to create Make Able. And the Make Able challenge is a free to use educational tool and competition with design thinking methods for you to use with your students in your STEM classes. The brief from last year was design and make a product or prototype that improves the day-to-day -day life of someone who struggles with mobility in their hands and using the tools and methods that we created the first part of this is stepping back into the problem space uh, and exploring and working with the users on, on various methods that we created and we focused on the user and there was lots and lots of different users here and these videos are what students created when they went out into their local communities and actually spoke to people to better understand their problem and not to assume they knew what this user was facing. And there's a range of disabilities here. As you can see on the screen, uh, these are just some of the examples that the students discovered. Um, and we wouldn't have known this had they have not gone in and used some of these methods and some discovery tools. Here's the first example, uh, challenge mapping design methods, where effectively students use the tools to watch the user in a time frame and map their day to identify challenges and in doing so can identify innovation. From this, the students then go into something we called icon sketching. And the resources are all available for this for you to be able to use. But icon sketching is rapid iteration of ideas, but being visual because it acts as a cognitive part of the brain that you can't get from just writing lists and notes. And then after that divergent thinking, we move into a convergent thinking exercise, which is which is, which is called uh, priority diagramming methods. Okay, uh, so the students take from one area and move into another. Now the outcomes were absolutely outstanding. Uh, this particular user 
and faced a problem with his balance after surgery. And uh, he wanted to be able so much to, to take his newborn child on a stroll. So what the student did is worked out the day-to-day -day challenges and created in the solution space a product which fits his wheelchair to the stroller. So he was able to take his child out. And this is students that are under 16, year old, 16 years old. In this case, it was a 13 year old teenager created this. This user has hypotonia. Okay? She's 12 years old and the condition causing her to become fatigued quickly due to low muscle tone. This device was created so she was able to grip a pen for longer. I mean, we all take for granted writing with a pen, uh, but this completely changing the life of this user just through design thinking. And this young man has something called hemiplegia. It's a neurological condition causing lack of control on one side of the body. Again, this device was created for him by students, so he was able to play the drums much easier. And finally, you know, this is Gary, a C6, a C6 quadriplegic, something we all take for granted opening a bottle was such a challenge for Gary. Students watched how he worked and what he was able to do and created using Fusion 360, an Autodesk tool, an additive manufacturer, something that can help him open bottles. Uh, again, we all take that for granted. So that was design thinking. Um, design thinking is something which is gonna take hours to get involved with, but as a starting point, here are some of the things you can do with your students. Think double diamond, so use that and encourage students to explore the problem space before the solution space. Secondly, focus on the user to discover what is desirable. Don't just assume we know what the user wants. Invite users into school, encourage students to go out and video and speak to people and make lists which can then be taken into design method tools, all available on Makeable. Don't let students fall in love, quick iterations. So if you're letting students spend more time on perfecting their idea to make it look pretty, that's not what we want to be doing with design thinking. You know, sketching is a way of communicating. It's not a way of being artistically uh, accurate. We're not hanging things up in an art gallery for this. This is a way of thinking. And fourthly, get involved with Makeable. It's completely free. It's open to everyone all over the world and everything you need for it is completely free. Uh, that was uh, Design Thinking and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. That was a wonderful presentation.